guys. Today we're going to talk about customer experience, customer satisfaction, and how to make sure that whatever it is you're selling, okay, product or service, how to make sure that you're going to get positive feedback, positive testimonials, positive word of mouth, positive reviews, okay? Because that is what's going to bring you more sales, more customers, more clients, okay? And it's not all about the product or the service itself, okay? You can have a great product, but if you have no marketing, nobody hears about it, well, you're not going to make any sales, nobody's going to buy it, okay? So you have to handle marketing, the actual design of the product, the copywriting about the service that you're trying to sell to try and get people to buy it. But then how you handle the customer experience on every other end, aside from the deliverable, the actual product or the service it's itself, is going to help you not get absolutely ripped, absolutely destroyed if the product or the service goes faulty or has an issue or anything like that, okay? And I'm gonna give an example because this is a very broad explanation that I'm giving right now, but let me give an example, okay? So in my case, it's Airbnbs. So I have my Airbnbs listed. Now, I wanna make sure that everything is seamless in the experience of booking the Airbnb, in the experience of accessing the Airbnb, okay? Because if that is seamless, and then say something goes wrong during their stay, they're far less likely to give me a one-star review if everything else has been five-star, okay? And so that means in the listing, in the listing description, okay? In the area description, I've given places to visit for food, places to visit that are landmarks that they should, they may wanna see. You know, I've given, pre, I've given information up front that they can use during their stay, okay? My photos are accurate, okay? They don't show things that the property doesn't actually have because if, if you did in that instance, if you show something that your product or service doesn't actually have and they receive the product or service and it doesn't have that certain thing that they saw in the, in the advertisement or in the listing, they're going to be disappointed, okay? Now they're thinking, oh, like, I wish it had that. And maybe when they're at their review, you know, property looks like it, it has a hot tub, but it doesn't, okay? So don't falsely advertise your product or service. And then with guest communication, so once they book, they're getting the check-in message. They're getting a code to access the property, okay? So they, and it tells them the instructions. The code is on, the lock is on the front door. You enter the code and you press the, uh, you press the key button and that will open the door and you'll get access to the property. The Wi-Fi code is this, the Wi-Fi name is this. So they have all that information up front. They don't need to come back to me. And they're thinking to themselves, oh, this was seamless. Oh, this communication is really good. And then responding effectively and quickly if they do have any issues, that's also going to help you. So they get all this upfront experience and then when they actually stay in the property, they're far more likely to give it a five star because everything leading up to that has been positive. Okay. And that is important in business. If you're, I'll give another example. I used to own pizzerias. They used to have small town pizza shops, okay, in Ireland. Okay, and I started my first one and I was running that for seven years until I got my second one. And then that was only a year. So eight years total running pizzerias. And the thing is, when a customer walks into your shop, that's when the five-star review begins. When you first interact with the customer and you say hello and you ask them how their day has been, that is you actually building up that five-star review. When you make the product quickly. You're not standing there chit-chatting with somebody else and the customer's waiting for their food thinking, you know, when are these guys going to start? You start straight away. You, you maybe interact with the customer during the process of making the order. Maybe when they ring the shop, if they don't even come in, they, they call the shop and they ask for delivery. You're polite on the phone. You know, you're making, would you like any drinks or dips with that? Blah, 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 blah. But upselling too. But also that makes them think, oh, like, okay, th this is pleasant. This guy's nice to talk to. They pay for the order. When the delivery driver comes to the door, he's pleasant. You know, he's not just leaving on the doorstep, knocking the door, knocking the door and walking away. He's actually interacting with the customer a little bit. So their experience has been good. Now, when they eat the pizza, okay, say the delivery is, is far away and the pizza is not as hot as it could be. They're far more likely to cut you the slack for that because everything else has been so positive for them. You understand? 
and say the customer gets the pizza. Now, my pizzas were always good. Okay, if I was making the pizza, it was always good. So I would expect them to love it. But say somebody had maybe forgotten a dip, which if you ever forget a dip, like a garlic mayo or a ranch dip with a pizza, that is a crime in people's eyes. Okay, they will freak out. But if everything has been so positive in the lead up to getting the pizza, well, they're far more likely to cut you some slack, okay? And accept it and maybe just call and ask for the dip to be sent up. And they're not going to go online and rip you a new one. But if everything has been negative and you were abrupt on the phone and, you know, your customer service was bad and everything, well, they're very likely then to leave you a, a bad review. So, guys, you've got to be nailing every aspect of your business, customer service especially. It's the most important part. Okay, sales and marketing, yes, that's what's going to bring money in. But the customer service is what's going to retain people. It's what's going to increase your actual brand identity and, and the reputation that your brand has. Since COVID, customer service has slipped out of almost every industry. You've seen it in restaurants and hospitality. You know, people just don't want to work and they're not very friendly. They're not easy to talk to. They're not going to, you know, um, their interactions aren't, aren't always positive. Um, so I see that a lot. And now, if you have good customer service and you have good customer service processes and if your business is completely online, I mean, my Airbnb is obviously that's a physical property, but everything I do to to manage those and to communicate with guests is all remote. I'm in Ireland. My Airbnb is in the USA. OK, I'm not near them. I, I'm not hands on, but I make sure I, I stay on top of everything, stay on top of the customer service, make sure they had, you know, they had a good stay, including the check in message. Thank you so much for staying up with us please leave a five star review it really goes a long way to help our family business okay i'm framing this in a way that you know it's not just us trying to grab money off them you know we are a family business which is not completely true but anyway we market it that way and then we send a follow-up follow-up message the next day we wish them a safe onward journey this all helps in the customer service experience and that's what's going to stick in their head okay i hope that makes sense guys if you feel like you learned something please hit subscribe it really helps the channel and I'll see you in the next one.